this time and age, when givers are a rare commodity to find on the Ghanaian and African markets, it is important to uh, imbibe in people the virtue of giving. Because he who gives never lacks. And we couldn't have had a better person to do justice to this topic than our own father and mentor, a veteran in the area of jihad and dawah, Sheikh Ishaq Niyama. Sheikh, salamu alaikum. Thank you. Wa alaikum salam. Allah wa barakatuh. Yeah. Sheikh, I've been to your house in Kumasi mm -hmm. before. I, I, I came to you in your study. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember. It's been maybe a decade or more. Mm. I didn't see inscribed on your gate, beware of dogs. Mm. But one way people scare off beggars or mm. people who seek assistance is mm. that rich people have boldly inscribed on their gates, beware of dogs. Don't come even close. What has happened to the spirit of giving within the Ghanaian culture? First and foremost, we'd like to express our profound gratitude to Allah for creating us as human beings the best of his creatures and he himself has planted in us in various ways things that should direct us to give to others to share with others if I see a person let me just give you a story before we continue there was a man at Achimota hmm? I didn't know him, but I was told that he was the type who would never give to anyone. And he was, as Kabunaya Bua would say, fantabulously rich. Yeah? The man was rich. But was a super miser, holding back his wealth, and not supporting the poor in any way. Then he wanted to celebrate his 60th birthday in his house and extended the invitation to people to come over. The program was to start at 4 p.m. The Ashantis will say, food, Adriani, chow, you know, what's there? The people he invited, only about 1% attended. And the reason was very simple. Because he kept his money back and was not supporting society with it, society shunned him at that time. The act of giving is that which lubricates human life. The act of giving is that which makes life very sweet in this world. And you, should, you rightly introduce the subject to it, with it that it is not common. The reason for that, you said you did, when you came to my house, didn't you be aware of dogs? Of dogs. Do you even have Today dogs? is Sunday. Do you have dogs, Shane? No, I have. You saw where I'm staying. I'm in the bush, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm opposite the university, KNUST University Forest, you know. But we keep them and release them only at night. So that they don't scare off anyone. Wow. Of course, somebody listening to me outside there, who said, why should the Malam keep dogs in his house? The prophet allows that if it is for protection and hunting. So I keep them in my house to scare off arm robbers, you know. Some days ago, robbers came into our area, you know, and they jumped into my house. It was around 2 a.m. I was not in the house, but my, my wife heard the noise of the jump. And then the two dogs rushed on the man, and he was looking for an escape. And the only thing he could do was to jump into my pickup, which was packed in the house, you know. <laughs> and you really have which was packed in the house. And then finally, he jumped over the wall again and went back. But you see, we don't release them in the daytime. We try to, you know, keep them in the cage. At night, we release them from 10 p.m. 4 a.m., we lock them up because by 4, 4.30, we are up. Half for me, by 2, I'm up to do work in the library. But you see, the problem we have today is that people are not giving because material enslavement has eaten the better part the kind part of us so we hold back money thinking that uh, when you give it out you know it will reduce in value it will reduce in volume and and you lose something but giving 
if you have been given the, the gift of sharing with others that you have the joy that will follow you is unimaginable so Shaikh, let's start this way within the Akan culture within the Dagumba culture within the Yoruba culture in your time as young people a stranger could just come into a community sleep in any house mm. eat whatever food mm. they want mm. is there any reason people are holding back is it insincerity on the part of those who beg because you are sheik we even hear reports that people go to the muslim world and tell cock and bull stories get a lot of money in the name of projects and they protect them is it the deficit of sincerity on the part of those who ask that is why they asked don't want to give that is one factor that is one factor but the key factor is that the whole world is suffering from what i call enslavement of materialism the love for material possessions has eaten the better part of us the kind part of us you know if you look at you do a graph of how we have deteriorated in the area of the act of giving it started after the industrial revolution before the industrial revolution human beings were very kind and the people believe that our very survival is dependent on social interdependence that is you need your brother your brother needs you now this industrial revolution is going to inject into us two things the spirit of consumerism and the spirit of selfishness because after the industrial revolution there was mass production and captains of industry decided to you know market the goods to tell people to buy you know to influence the taste of people so this phone is produced today two weeks time another phone is produced mass production and the, the items will have to be sold so they will have to influence your taste such that even though you have this phone the next one that is coming only a small value has been added in, in respect of design whatever the new phone can do the old one can do but you abandon the old one because this one is new so everything was look everybody was looking for something new and that led to possession of goods in people's homes and they were smart they added another thing which i think did the big blow to the act of giving and that was the philosophy that if you have possessions material possessions eh, you'll be a happy person if you have material possessions you'll be a happy person but you see today their own social psychologists and psychologists are after studying the trend of clustering in the hands of people people amassing properties but they were still not happy huh? because the quest for new things was an ongoing process every now and then people are looking for new things he has the old one that can offer the same service but will go for a new one i know of a friend in cape coast he had nissan patrol just like mine and was using it effectively like doing his business across the country one day I visited him. I spent the night with him in his house. Then I went to where he does it. He, 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 he used to deal in drugs. So I went to where he, he the company was. You mean pharmaceutical products? Yeah, yes, yes. Not yes. drugs as in. No, no, no. Then I saw a new Nissan Patrol, brand new. Then I asked him, Alaji, where is this car from? He said, from Germany. It just arrived i've not even licensed it then i asked him you are always telling me you need to expand the business huh? so i'm asking you a simple question what work will this new car do that the old one could not do he was unable to answer i said this money i don't know how much you're using importing this car from germany but now it's into thousands of dollars couldn't you have invested in the company and expand the company and then you keep to this uh, how do you call it uh, old car for some time so people 
started loving new things. And the more you love new things, the more the spirit of consumerism goes up. And as a process, you'll be thinking about the new things you have to acquire, eh? which is coming from spirit of consumerism. And it will gradually be killing the love that should be in your heart to give to others. I want a new thing. Why do I then give to Asumesi? Huh? So this was how it started. Number two, people were told that if you have properties, you'll be happy. So the more you have love for properties, the, the more the spirit in you to help you give out also reduces as a consequence. But today, after amassing wealth, the Europeans and the Americans are now, their scholars are now questioning what is the source of human happiness. And you'll be shocked. Two scholars, James Wallman and Oliver James Wallman and Oliver James, they did studies on about 32,000 individuals across Europe, America, and Canada. And their conclusion is that. The real source of joy in life is when you help others. When you look at your track record, myself, I'm now 64 years, eh? 64. And I look at my life and I realize that so many hands, dotted hands, had influenced the process of my growth and progression in life. Eh? I was born into a very, very, very super poor family. The very day I was born, my father told my mother that he wanted me to be a Muslim scholar and propagate Islam. Huh? Six years on, my father packed my things into a portmanteau and brought me to Kumasi and handed me over to Sheikh Adam Muhammad Apiru in Kumasi. This man, Allahu Akbar, great man, very generous man. He brought me up from age six up to 28 and gave me the daughter, my first wife, huh, to marry. And between us, we have 10 children, huh? five boys, five girls. Honestly, it was the magnanimity of Sheikh Adam huh, that gave me a ground footing to start life. So it was kindness from the man that pushed me to where I am. And I remember very well in 1984, when I was going to marry the daughter, he just sat me down in his hall. He said, it's hard, my son. This wedding is on my head. Huh? I didn't pay a dime, not even one dollar. He sponsored everything. <laughs> I don't know whether you call it scholar boat or scholarship. <laughs> more, than, more than a scholarship. <laughs> you know, he, he, he spent so much money, not a dime from me. You know, he did another wonderful thing. He gave me chamber and hall in his house. He has a story about him, one story. He gave me chamber and hall on the top floor. And opposite that chamber and hall, he was staying in there with his wife. So I was sharing the washroom with him. Kindness of the best kind, you know? Generosity. So we were hanging in up there and then I was then in Saudi Arabia so I came down to get married you know what the man did every year he told me that it's hard you are now in Saudi Arabia you have you'll be coming to settle finally in 89 you know so what we'll do is that I'll keep your wife in this house I'll take care of her and any children that will come you know so Huda and Abdullah you know and Ilham enjoyed the grace from this man. Anytime I came on holidays, eh, because this man, he knew that me, I was bookholic. Any money I got in Saudi Arabia, I would buy books. So he, he read, he knew me, he brought me up. So every year, anytime I came on long vac, this man would dip his hand into his pocket and give me pocket money for three months. I posted this story on my WhatsApp page and somebody said, Sheikh, you have, you have let me shed tears this morning. 
What a touchy story. But for the magnanimity and kindness and generosity of this man, where would I have been? And when he was alive, and I was rising small, 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 huh? appeared on TV, writing books, the man was overwhelmed that I was his handiwork and was a happy man. So Oliver James, they are not Muslims. Oliver James and James Warman, they are saying that what brings happiness to man is not material possessions, but the volume of support you give to others, meaning you add value to the life of others. Huh? So that in future, when you look back like this, then you can say that these are my products. These are people I helped. And that brings you maximum joy in your heart. Yeah, sure. um, certainly, we've studied mathematics. When you have two and you take one from it, you mm. don't get three. Oh, okay. You are reduced to one. Mm. Can we attach that mathematical understanding? Because every wealthy man does the mouth of generosity, of philanthropy all the time. They call it corporate social responsibility. But they make sure a little goes to society. Look at the multinational mining companies. Very little goes to Obwasi, but they keep the chunk. Uh, so how do we psych people up uh, beyond saying, okay, this gives you happiness? Do you earn more when you give? The more you give, the more you get. The more you get huh? That comes from the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad. You know, let me tell you one thing. Depending upon your orientation, because we have the meritorious path of man, then we have the spiritual path. Those who are normally and generally materially oriented will do this mathematical thing. Eh? Those who are spiritually oriented will say that the more I spend, the more I get. Sometimes you may not get the physical, but there's another world you are going to live in there. So you are preparing yourself for more comfort at that place. When people see me running around the country, going to universities and trying to reorient Muslim students, they ask me, Sheikh Nyama, hey, you're 64, don't you go on retirement? I tell them, retirement is in the grave. It's when you have died. And then you go down there, and out of his grace and mercy. That, that, that is the best thing. But once I'm alive, he has said that we have created man to be in a state of constant struggle. So it's work here. Work, 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 work. So I know that the efforts I'm making, I'm going to receive reward. The one giving has that faith, which is coming from spirituality. So he said that, no, if I give, Allah will reward me. So he, that mathematics doesn't come there to work at all. Uh, look at this man in Saudi Arabia. Raji, this rich man, you went, you saw his banks yes, in Saudi Arabia. Raji. Yeah, I did. He has the yeah. billions of dollars. Yes. The five star hotels. Uh, and the man, he's, yeah, he's went, almost the richest man in Saudi Arabia. Raji. 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 No, he has banks even in Japan. Raji. You know what he did some five years ago? He sat the whole family down and dedicated 30% of his wealth. For philanthropic works. Bill Gates eh? and the wife Melinda, they've donated a huge amount of their wealth to fight malaria across, across the globe. That is life. The act of giving does not only add value to you in respect of the spiritual world, but also it helps you change the lives and fortunes of other people. If you don't do this in life, I'm telling you, your wealth is useless. Because wealth is supposed to create comfort for others. That is why some of us, I thank Allah, wherever I find myself and I'm able to support somebody, I go out. People around me will say, ah, but that is all the money. I say, well, immediately he needs. So let's share and move on. After the future, Allah will take care of it. So long as I have good plans and I'm executing them, the blessings will come from him. And the resources that I'm using now will come from other angles that we never anticipated. So my house 
we always have one or two or three orphans that we are taking care of because of the spirit and the faith that we have so the mathematical calculation does not come in here at all because we think that we have a different world that will be living apart from here so when we do it the mathematics is not working the mathematics will work over there for us <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've spoken on the macro level mm -hmm. bill gates even right mm. but for somebody watching us here in ghana from around the world mm. if in the next one hour you want to be kind to people have the spirit of giving where do we start do we start with food do we start with water do we start with giving accommodation to people where do we start because you see rich people they overcook they are wealthy children just touch this food a little touch that and the rest is dumped into the trash can while next door there's somebody who hasn't eaten since morning where do we start on the micro level in terms of kindness you look on the micro level i'll go for the chinese proverb which states that don't give out fish to a person teach the person how to fish the best kind of generosity that we can do to Muslims to other individuals in society is to empower them educationally investment huge investment in education for example August every August my house is choked with Muslim students eh? who cannot pay their university bills I don't have that money eh? but they know I have the link to other people so we'll come to poor Isaac Nyama I'll start to have hypertension in my head because who do I go to then I sit down to strategize so after this boy I think this gentleman let me talk to him to support him if he doesn't pay all we we'll see how things will go so number one on the area of generosity is education and education is key to both development of the human being at the micro and the macro level at the individual level the person needs education education leads to independence in thinking planning and execution in life almost education is everything you you are sitting here huh? Irbat security consults anytime I, I read that inscription I ask myself this is my son if he hadn't gone to school do you think he could have set up huh, such a corporate body airbag security consult education and education that you had you know you didn't go to anyone that give me billions to set up the setting up of the corporate body you have came from your ingenuity huh, innovation and creativity and that came from education so when you empower people with knowledge you help them to be empowered with self-independence and confidence and ability to do big things so i think that even if we want to kill poverty in society for now we may have millions or thousands but let's start with a number and as we progress in the years they will increase the number a time will come that poverty will naturally die you know in uk uk is a class of society if you are born poor you are poor forever that's a system in capital in the capitalist world america is like that unless of course you are specially gifted then as you enter school and university then the state will just be watching you and say, ah, this young man has unique qualities and capabilities so let's support him otherwise the system that works is like this because it's a class society and the cycle of poverty is imminent in some homes so when a family wants to get out of the poverty cycle you know what they do they will pick one of the most brilliant students in the family and the whole family will add a touch of support to such a person in fact the arabs had that culture it used to be called al-aqila communal support 
but this one is not the entire society just at the family level father uncle aunties sisters they will sit down and said that we have to kill poverty in this family huh? so let's support this young man they will support him he will go through the topmost universities cambridge university of london oxford and so on and so forth he comes out at first class flying colors then he's moving in five six seven years time he is somewhere then he also picks somebody in the family and then up they go by 20 years time they've gotten out of the cycle of poverty how did it happen because of the exhibition of the spirit of generosity but i think shake and that kind of people used to have it one mm. person would go abroad the <laughs> bugger yes or you think that was a crude way of doing it education would produce a better result of course you see the one who goes abroad huh, may only succeed in bringing material things cars listen and, and sometimes even the people that it brings the cars to to handle because they are not developed intellectually they, they have intellectual deficiency you see so they can't even handle it well I, I know of a lot of people in kumasi who are very wealthy but because they didn't even give education to their children their monies you know if i mention the person you know at least one of them from zongo he was hugely rich but didn't groom his children through education and now everything has gone down the drain so knowledge gives light in the mind somebody asked me Shikunyama, how do you maintain these four wives they asked me a question at k university yes. then i told them that i handled them with my mouth what do you mean by you handle your wives with your mouth i said well, you see if you want to be polygamous you need to have sweet mouth <laughs> you know you are a diplomat at home oh yeah a diplomat and when i use the word sweet man it doesn't mean lie oh no 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 you don't tell lies but the psychology of every woman which you need to know you're not yet married and i'm not blaming you you will get one inshallah of your of your heart the truth is that every woman wants care. Every woman wants attention. And they want a man whose mouth is sweet. Who can? Me, I'm a first class jovial person. My first wife, huh? You know, she has stayed with me in July to be 36 years. She knows me too much. She knows that when I enter the house, in the morning and i start to crack jokes eh? for them to laugh my children will be laughing she will be laughing everybody will be laughing eh? it's happiness huh? you know then my wife will tell the children your father doesn't have money this morning <laughs> 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 so he will come over in to the house he'll crack the jokes eh? and then everybody will laugh so when i'm going to him even to ask for money eh? because i have laughed this morning <laughs> as if he has given me money <laughs> i'm going to him even with difficulty i can't even ask for so the jovial environment you know is telling the woman at least to hold on for some time so for a husband to even create a lively environment oh it's extremely it's a form of generosity oh, yeah, yeah yeah it is it is sundays these days because i'm not stable you know in the past sunday you, you'll find me pounding fufu hmm? really oh yes or well, light a light I'll pound fufu. Yeah, I'll tell them this Sunday I'm going to pound the fufu. Oh. Not all. I'll just start for five, ten minutes, then I'll stop. And you hand over the pestle to somebody. Then you'll find everybody standing around me to see how I would pound fufu. Huh? They see it as a special exercise from a special father. Maybe our next topic will be parents and shape. Yes, no but problem. There are some fathers, when they get to the window, they make sure you hear the sound of their shoes and people will be running around uh, because this disciplinarian has come home you shouldn't be too hard on kids that that wife. person is not generous he's a wicked human being if there are some parents fathers in particular when they, they are traveling then their children will raise up their hands they are happy <laughs> <laughs> 
that the, 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 the tiger is gone. <laughs> <laughs> the tyrant is 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 is, is God. Yeah, in closing, yeah, and um, what would be your final words? And this is your camera. The whole world is watching. Thank you very and much. What will be your final words on the act of giving? Oh, the act of giving. You see, it is a trait that has to be cultivated. That has to be acquired. So start with a little. If it is ten cities, two cities. Every Friday when you go to the mosque, start to give to other people. Bear in mind that the more you share, the joy you get. The creator is just watching you to see how generous you'll be to his servants. Always a pleasure to listen to snippets of wisdom and flowing out of Sheikh Isaac Nyama and a moralist than offer and in April, Sheikh is going to offer two books. I'm sure there will be an opportunity to discuss the titles and contents of those two books. Follow Sheikh on all platforms. And Sheikh, do you share to, care to share your number? Because yeah, you said. Morning motivation no problem. It's, um, my WhatsApp number is 0244. If you are outside Ghana, you, of course, you will add 233 plus, plus 233 244 13 23 23. If you are in the local environment, the number is 0244 Okay, so we come your way next time. Stay blessed. Wassalamu alaikum. Bye-bye.